Hello grade 5 teachers, let's have a look at some ways that you can connect computer sciences into your matter unit. We know that the computer sciences organizing idea from kindergarten all the way through grade 6 has to do with creativity, design, and computational thinking. By the time the students hit you in grade 5, there are a lot of key understandings that they should have learned in the lower grades. For the first few years that you're implementing the new science curriculum, you're definitely going to find yourself covering some gaps. The nice thing about the computer science curriculum is that the early grades talk a lot about understanding instructions, following instructions, interpreting them, and creating them. And these things are skills that students will have learned just naturally through their daily classroom routines and procedures. So it's easy for you to quickly go over this with students and make that specific connection into how instructions that we follow, like humans, like how we know how to brush our teeth, for example, our algorithms in the same way that we can teach computers or machines. So just by connecting how we follow instructions, the same as machines follow instructions, you can cover those early on outcomes in the computer sciences area and prepare students for what they're expected to know and learn in grade five. In grade five, we are talking about design process. They should have already learned computational thinking, specifically in grade three, and then the design process is introduced in grade four. So by grade five, you are referring to both the computational thinking and design processes as review items. They're important concepts. They continue to be included throughout your computer sciences as well as grade six and we are can interpret that they're going to grow on into older grades as well as new curriculums roll out. Also they're just two processes that apply to a lot of problem solving and daily life type skills so it's great to constantly be referring to them reminding students what the pieces are and making connections into what we're doing whenever we can. In grade five, we're starting to see explicitly that students are going to be block coding. I have an activity further along in this session that covers some block coding in the Scratch program. If your students are already using Scratch, you can have them creating things in there that's going to um, connect into the computer sciences. If what they're creating is connected into one of their other subjects, then you're going to be needing that and marrying computer sciences into everything. So students see that it really is connected to everything and it's not just a topic in science that lives on its own. Computational thinking, as I said, was taught in uh, lower grades if the students did computer science previously, but it's coming up again as a big understanding in grade five. So anytime we can refer to those computational thinking steps, make connections to them as we're doing our other activities and learning, we're gonna help cement this understanding for our students as well. And then we see here, we're talking about creating sets of instructions for humans or machines. So if we are, asking students to figure out the steps to do anything, we're meeting this computer science skill as well. And then making those connections into computational thinking. When we use creativity for problem solving, it's asking us to think about new ways to achieve the same outcome, to look at alternative solutions to a problem and really just be flexible with our thinking. Our students have worked through the design process in grade four, but it's always good, as I say, to bring it up again, make sure that any time we're doing any piece of this throughout our daily routines, our classroom lessons and activities, we just identify that we are doing that piece of design thinking. We talk about design thinking, say, hey students, we were just ideating when we were brainstorming about this activity together. And same with the computational thinking, just connecting into those pieces, recognizing when we're decomposing things, talking about algorithms. Hey students, I gave you an algorithm for what happens when the recess bell goes. What is it? I'm just connecting that computational thinking and that language right into our daily procedures. 
A really fun activity you can have your students do is to create a particle model in Scratch. So depending on your students' comfortability with the Scratch platform, if they've used it before and they, they understand sort of the basics of creating sprites and how code is built, you could certainly ask them to try and work this out on their own. You could also share with them my templates. So I have a set of scratch cards. These are going to show students the code that they need to build. And then there's also a template directly in scratch that you could share this link out with your students. That you go there, click on the big green remix button. This template has all of the sprites in place, um, but leaves room for students to do all of the coding, as well as add this informational piece about each of the states of matter. So they can show you that they understand the states of matter, while also working on all of those computer science outcomes and creating an artifact with block coding in Scratch. And the Scratch cards that I have created are uh, much like the commercial ones you may have seen in the past. So each step of the building of the game is included there. All of the blocks of code that are needed are also there. So students can just take that, that set of slides and follow through and create this game. You can also, as I say, if they have more advanced scratch skills, you could show them the example, give them the goal, tell them what you want them to make, and then have them just go freely at it with the scratch interface and try and build that game from scratch. Doing it on their own, of course, is going to really up the level of the design thinking and the computational thinking, but following the slides and creating exactly what I've set out there for them too is going to meet a lot of those outcomes as well. So you can decide either way. Definitely if students want to make some changes, adaptations, extensions to what has been built, maybe they can find a better way to do it than I've done it. I would highly encourage that. So that is all there for them to use. A great working model to show that they understand about the states of matter and how the, the molecules move around and also show that they can do some block coding and they get that scratch interface. Most of the other skills and procedures in matter uh, don't necessarily make a, a quick natural connection to your computer science skills and procedures because we're really wanting students to you know, build in those that block coding and come up with computational artifacts in the grade five CS. We might not see as many connections as there are in other topics in your science or perhaps in some of the lower grades because by grade five, we want to be ingraining that design thinking process and the computational thinking process into as much as we can. Any of the skills and procedures that you're covering, students are learning content, they're doing hands-on science experiments by having them, for example, create the instructions for the experiment themselves, they're going to be working through that computational thinking piece. If you have students create a set of instructions for measuring the mass of solids and liquids, you are meeting that skill and procedure that's just a very basic hands-on, this is how we do it thing. But once I write those instructions out, I'm working into that computational thinking so we can make those connections. Also, anytime the students are following instructions or creating instructions, you're also meeting the outcomes from the division one computer sciences that your students might not have been explicitly taught because of how the curriculum rolled in. So these skills and procedures, other skills and procedures that you're doing in your other subjects, it could be math, social, language, arts, it could be just classroom routines and procedures. If you're asking students to develop them, to create them, how would you give this instruction to a machine? you are connecting into that computational thinking piece, breaking it down into its parts, putting steps in order, we're decomposing, recognizing the patterns, abstracting the patterns, and then doing that algorithm design. If you can include if-then statements, that's a 
take it to a next level, make those connections when we're developing rules and instructions, and you're really going to hit that computational thinking and give kids those skills to build not only their computer coding skills, but really just that critical thinking that helps us be really good problem solvers in all areas of our lives. So those are some ways that you can connect computer sciences into your matter unit. I would encourage you to have your students create scratch games and projects on any kinds of concepts that it makes sense for them to do. By the grade five level, having them go in and create and design what that game's going to be, what the sprites are going to be, what the code needs to be to get, make that game function is really going to be meeting those computer science outcomes, helping them practice those skills so that they can further build on them. I hope you enjoyed.